What's up, guys? Welcome back to another mukbang. So today I'm having wing stop, and I figured I'd tell you guys a little story about what we ate. So Isaac's taking a nap. Isaiah's watching his nursery rhymes. <laughs> as he's eating his Cheerios. So let's just go ahead and get started. It's kind of gloomy outside, so the lighting's probably not all that great, but anyways, let's get started. So, like I said, I have Wingstop. Let me show you guys what I got. Got some classic um, buffalo bone-in. Got some mild bone-in right here. And then we got a tender of Parmesan garlic, and we got some, um, Atomic tenders right there as well. So let me open my ranch. I'm so excited. You guys, Wingstop Ranch is the best ranch. And got some of the original um, buffalo sauce right here as well. And let me put that down a little bit more before we get copyrighted up in here got my water to hydrate and I have an extra ranch here just in case you know just in case all right amen amen oh you guys I have been hooked on um the show flash on Netflix Jonathan is the one who got me into it he started watching it the other day the day before yesterday, I think. It's the Atomic, and we're gonna dip it in some ranch here. Mm-hmm. But yeah, he started watching it the day before yesterday, and he got me. Got me. You got me to start watching it in the beginning. It's and eh. the shows that I usually like to watch, I like them to like start off interesting and suspenseful. Like I watch, I like watching Law and Order, stuff like that. Like if it's action based, I want it act. I want the action to start like right away. And I'm not that much into like comics, but this one like, as you keep watching, it gets more and more interesting. So it's pretty good if you stick to it. So that's what I've, what I've been watching. I'm barely starting um, episode 13. I'm still in the first season, but so far it's pretty good. It keeps you like really like Uh, what's the word? It's really unpredictable. Like, the whole time you're like, what? Which is pretty cool. Because usually, like, within, with shows, I can call it, like, what's going to happen right away. But I can't really do that with this one, so it's pretty cool. <clears throat> and that was a bite of the garlic palm. But today's story time that I kind of wanted to tell you guys is because I wanted to tell you guys this story today because yesterday as we were driving to Wingstop, we passed by uh, our old job, mine and Jonathan's old job. Well, one of our old jobs. And it was like, um, well, we passed by where it used to be because it's like completely the whole building was knocked down. It's not there anymore. I just thought 
about like all the stuff that happened there. And I was like, I should tell you guys a story time. So, look at all that farm cheese. So this job was actually at Taco Bell. So my very first like legit job that wasn't like working with my parents or like at my parents store was at Taco Bell and it was at this Taco Bell. So I worked at this Taco Bell for a few months while I was still in school. I was 18, I wanna say. No, I lie. I was going to be 18, I was 17 when I started this job. Cause like I said, I was still in school. Um, and That, um, the manager that we had there, the general manager, she was really cool. We grew to be friends. And, um, you know, I worked there for a few months and then I graduated high school and I moved back to California. So, I left that job. And then, when, we moved, when Jonathan and I moved over here, so it was Jonathan's first time coming to move to Washington. We went back. We went to that Taco Bell and we got a job there together. And like I said, the the manager was there was really cool. She um Sorry. So she was pretty cool. She let us work uh, shifts together because we only had the one car. So she was making it easy on us so we would work the same shift most of the time. Um, so. So fast forward, we're working there, right? And um, uh, <clears throat> our general manager, she wasn't the type of manager, you know, like usually when people get the title, they stop actually working and they just sit in their office and let everybody else do the work. She wasn't that type. She would still work um, and actually she would work her, her butt off. Like at some nights, um, it was just her working the drive through by herself, taking orders and making the orders at the same time. And she was really quick on the line, like making the food, but that's still a lot, you know? And especially if it's like a Friday night 
It's going to be busy. But she started telling us, well, she started telling me about how little, like, weird things would happen there. So, I mean, all the co-workers got, the, uh, all the co-workers there got along pretty well. I mean, one of Jonathan's best friends now, he met there. And they still talk. Um, it's been years. But they still talk. And, um... There was one co-worker that worked there. Was she still working there? I think she was still working there when Jonathan worked there, too. And she told me one time that they all, for the most part, believed that because this building was old, for one, and so since it was old, it was a lot of different things before it became that talkable. And she told me that it used to be another food chain i don't remember what food chain exactly she told me but i do remember that she said it was a, it used to be another food food chain and that they had heard that there was a baby like fetus but like a dead fetus found in that building before it became talk about and i was like i was like wow like that's crazy you know And then they also, she also told me that a lot of them there thought that somewhere within the building, within the Taco Bell, that they, they thought there was like a portal for spirits and stuff like that. And I was like, I mean, I never worked like nights nights. Jonathan and I would work up until like nine and that was the latest. Because at one point, while we were working there, our car broke down, so we would take the bus. So, our manager accommodated our schedule with the bus schedule, so we wouldn't miss it. Because it would stop passing by there at a certain time, and the latest it would run there was like 9, I think. So, we wouldn't work any later than 9. So, nothing like crazy happened while we were there. But... Like I said, my manager would work nights by herself in there, like completely by herself. And obviously being by herself, she witnessed most of like the paranormal stuff, paranormal stuff. But she never really liked talking about it because you know how I say, if you talk about it, it kind of like invites whatever's around. And, um, oh my gosh, Isaiah just fell asleep on his high chair. But, um, I just lost my, lost my train of thought. She witnessed most of the stuff, but she didn't like talking about it because of that same reason, you know? But I'm going to tell you guys, and like, there's a whole bunch of different stories that happened there, and then there's other jobs that I've had with like, paranormal stuff that's happened, and that I've actually witnessed myself, so, if you guys want to hear about that after the video, after this video, then you guys can like, let me know, and I'll talk, I'll like, tell those stories next. But this one time, well, this one, there was some times where, like, I would start a little bit earlier than Jonathan, so I would get off earlier than him. 
but I would wait for him in like the office so that we can take like the bus so we can take the bus together. And um one time that I was waiting there um after you know the we closed the lobby down I don't know what it was why we started talking about this but my general manager and I were sitting in the lobby and we were talking and she starts telling me about stuff that she's been like noticing happening there and stuff that's happened to her you guys she told me because like I said I worked there with other co-workers before Jonathan started working there with me. So there was some co-workers that, you know, that I worked with that no longer worked there that Jonathan never got to meet. And one of those co-workers worked night shifts only. And um, one of the night shifts that he was working with my general manager, it was just them two, she told me that... Um, they were working together and then she started feeling really weird. And she thought she was just tired. And then that homeboy, that, that co-worker, he used to live, well, that he had a roommate that did a whole bunch of like witchcraft and stuff like that. And, um, my general manager said she, you know, she didn't know if our co-worker actually did that kind of stuff with his roommate, but she just knew that his roommate did it. And anyways, she was working with that co-worker that night. They were closing by themselves and she started feeling really weird. And then she went into the office to finish off the paperwork after, you know, they finished cleaning everything down. And that he came and he was telling, he was going to tell her, he was like walk, you know, walk past the office and tell her he was leaving already. And that she just, that his face, you guys, was like completely black, like pitch dark black. And that he had some horns and oh my God, she was like, it was the creepiest thing that she had ever seen. And that... She didn't say anything, that she just looked at him and she was like, okay, and she said bye, you know? And that that night she got home and she had, she had another girlfriend at the time, not the one that she was with when Jonathan and I worked there, but I got to know that girlfriend too. And that she, she got there and she, she didn't want to tell her, like she didn't want to tell her at home that she was just like, she couldn't sleep and that she was just trying to like make sense of what she had just seen and what just had just happened. And I told Jonathan. You guys, that just scared me because everyone that lives here has keys. So hold on. Okay. Oh. Well, that was weird. There was nobody there. <laughs> um, but where was I? Okay. So after she tells me this, like, I was a little creeped out, you know? And I told Jonathan, like, the whole story, and then, like, he didn't really, law and order. He was just like, what? Law and order. Law and order. So I told him about it, and I told him about that co-worker, and he was like, he was like, that's weird. That's, like, really weird. And I was like, I know, right? And, um... So that happened one night that she told me. Okay, I already saw that. So I told him, and he was like weird, and I was like, I know, right? And then, you know, that was it. Like, that was one night that the, she told me that, and then, you know, we kind of forgot about it, moved on. Although, after she told me that, I was kind of creeped out, like going into the freezer and stuff. Cause I was like, oh my God, what if this is the portal? But then I was like, 
come on. And then there was, um, there was other stuff that would happen there, like, whoever worked nights said that they would see, like, a little girl walking around. Weird, I know. But, the really creepy part that got me was, and it's like, <laughs> like I said, I knew that co-worker, like, I knew who he was. Jonathan didn't know who he was, but I knew who he was. And I kind of wasn't really taking orders anymore. I was kind of just like working the line in the kitchen making the orders. But one day we were kind of short staffed. So um, since I already knew how to take orders for the drive thru, I was like, okay, I, I mean, I'll, drop, I'll jump on the drive thru for today. No problem. And um, I was taking orders. It was a pretty cool day, you know, nothing, nothing too major what was happening. And then, I get an order, and guess who pulls through the window, y'all? I nearly me cagué los pantalones for real. The dude that she told me that had turned into that, that ex-co-worker, Pulls up to the drive through with some other dude, and I was like, oh, my God. Like, I took the order, and I was like, like, I don't think he remembered me that much, but I was like, okay, you know. Y'all, my heart was racing, and Jonathan was at the on the line making orders, and I was like, oh, my God, oh, my God. And I was just thinking, I was like, oh, my God, is that his roommate? I was like, oh, my God, like, don't make eye contact. And then I went, and, like, I went, and I, like, hid myself in the line, and I got, like, their sauces, and I was just waiting for the order. Like, I don't want to stand there by the window. And then after he leaves, I told Jonathan, I was like, oh my lord, I was like, it was that guy. And he was like, what? And he tries to walk to the window to see who it was. And I was just like, oh my goodness. And it was just like creepy because like, you know, like he was there in my presence. But yeah, that was, that's one of the Taco Bell stories. Y'all, that was so creepy. I was just glad that I never freaking actually um witnessed anything there because that was creepy y'all and um you know eventually what happened there was i mean stuff started changing People started leaving to get, you know, obviously better opportunities. But people started leaving especially because, like I said, our general manager was really cool. But then she got a better offer, so she was going to leave too. And we were going to get a new general manager. And just everything was changing. We, we got in um, someone. <sighs> Y'all. Yeah. We got a new manager, and that's another story that I need to tell you guys about. It was, I think back at it now, and it's so funny, but it's so mean at the same time. So if you guys want to hear about that story, let me know down below. Um, but yeah, stuff started changing, and we all kind of left. And now that place is knocked down. I honestly think that. Our general manager was the only one keeping it afloat, honestly. <clears throat> but yeah, that's pretty much <sighs> Moscow time. Uh, Taco Bell. Woo. You guys, I live for wings. I had been craving wings stop for like two weeks before we got the. <laughs> and then their carrot sticks with this ranch
That was kind of weird. Let the doorbell ring right now. There was nobody there. Um, they only rang the one time. And then... Um, I looked through the window by the door to see if I saw anybody. I didn't see anybody there and I didn't see like a package, like if a package was left or anything like that. Jonathan told me to see if they left like a maybe like a missed package paper on the door, but I was like, nah, I'd open the door. <laughs> mm -mm. You played yourself with that one, because I didn't open it. And then I just went and I laid down Isaiah, so Isaiah and Isaac are just snoring their lives away right now. Mm. Well, I'm getting out of pool. Probably take a couple other bites. And I'm going to finish. Well, not finish because there's three seasons and I'm barely on season one. But I'm going to continue watching Flash so I can see who killed his mama. And, yeah. If you guys are watching Flash 2, stay tuned. No spoiler alerts, please. And, yeah, if you guys want to hear any more Taco Bell stories, paranormal stories of my previous jobs, you guys, I have some pretty ratchet Taco Bell stories. So, if you guys want to hear about those, let me know. Maybe we'll create, like, a Taco Bell, a ratchet Taco Bell chronicle story time, mukbang things. Um... But yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you guys so much for watching. <sighs> Wake up is so good. Now I'll catch you guys on my next one. Stay happy. Uh.